Okay guys, welcome back to the Timber Forge. Finally, I'm going to be bringing the full video for the tank video that I released, the tank data pack. So today I will be going through first how to use my data pack in detail and everything you could do with it. And I will also be going through how the data pack actually works. So let's get right into it with how to use the data pack. So firstly, what you want to do is make the custom crafting table. What you have to do is place down a crafting workbench then drop an anvil on top of the crafting table. This will turn it into the custom crafting table. So now what you do is you have to craft the engine of the tank first. So what you want to do is grab three iron trap doors and put it in the bottom. Then grab two pistons and put it in the top. Then a block of redstone in the middle, in the middle top. And then a furnace on both sides and a blast furnace in the center you get this tank engine. Now in order to use the tank engine what you want to do is build the tank. So in order to build the tank these are the materials you will need. So first of all you need 10 pieces of black wool. It's 5 on one side and then 5 on the other. Now get 5 iron trapdoors right in the center. Now get 6 blocks of iron just like this and then fill in those corners with smooth sandstone and it has to be smooth sandstone or it will not work you cannot use cut sandstone or regular sandstone it has to be smooth sandstone then get iron bars 10 iron bars five on each side now get your three ladders put them in the very back then in the back put three sandstone slabs put down your final block of smooth sandstone and for the slabs, they also have to be smooth sandstone, it won't work otherwise. And then three sandstone walls. Then put on your iron trap doors to cap the whole thing. So it should look like this. And now finally, put your tank engine in the center. Now as you'll notice, the tank was summoned. So if you get in the tank right now, it's not actually going to do anything because it doesn't have any fuel and it doesn't have anything to shoot. As you can see, I'll get in it, and if I hold these things and click them, it doesn't do anything to drive. You can move the barrel around, but that doesn't really help you since you can't shoot. So in order to get ammo and in order to get fuel, you need to go back to the crafting bench and craft the ammo. So to craft the ammo, it's 64 gunpowder and 16 heavy-weighted pressure plates and that'll give you a stack of heat rounds. And heat round stands for high explosive anti-tank round. So that's just the basic round that I have. I might add more in the future, but for now that's all. And then to make the fuel, I'm just gonna use a stack of charcoal, that's how you make it. And you get compressed charcoal, which is the fuel for the tanks. Now for the heat rounds, you can craft them um, one by one if you use one weighted pressure plate and four gunpowder if you want to but I recommend just crafting a whole stack it makes it a lot easier and so in order to use these you have to put them right here in your eighth slot and then to put the fuel in the tank you go to this chest here and then you put this right in the corner see as you can see the lore says use to fuel tanks place in top left of fuel chest and this is the fuel chest. You could also sort, store stuff in here if you want. And if I get in here, you'll notice that these uh, controls actually work now. So in order to make the controls work, all you have to do is hold it out. And so all you have to do to drive forward is hit 5 and you'll hold the center. As you can see if you look down in my hotbar. And then if you collide with stuff, it'll actually stop your tank. So I'll just run into here. So, as you can see, it just stopped, and if you want to drive backwards, just hit 9, and you'll be able to move backwards, and then 6 to move forward and right, and then 5 to go forwards, 4 to go forward and left, and then if you do 3 or 7, then you will spin in place, and if you want to shoot, all you have to do is hold any of these arrows, so if you want to stay in the same spot where you are, just hold a beige arrow, just hold any of the arrows, and then hit G. And as you can see, it caused an explosion because it shot out. So in order to adjust the height of your barrel, hold one of the beige arrows and then click. The reason I made it clicking is so that you would have a lot more control over the angle of your barrel. So 
you didn't have to try to nail it down as it, the barrel was moving. And you could also move while shooting. So if I just lower this barrel down by clicking with the down arrow, I could move forward and I could drop it while I'm moving forward. Let me just go here. And I could shoot while I'm moving forward. And another thing I forgot to mention is that in order to be able to actually see yourself, because if you stay in first person, you're just going to be on the inside of the tank and it's going to be hard for you to see. What you want to do is hit F5, which is the default for changing your perspective. And if you go into third person, then you'll be able to see the tank from third person. And that's how it's easiest to drive around. And so I'll show you some of the additional features. So one of them is that you can, if you're moving forwards, you'll be able to run over certain small objects like grass and cobwebs. They'll just get crushed in your path. And this is to make sure that they could actually move around in like a plains biome, for example. Okay, so I'm going to go through an explanation of most of the function files and how they work in order of the execution. So I was going to go line by line and do an explanation of the entire data pack, except I decided that that would be too much of my time and no one would really watch it. So the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to go through and explain the general chunks of code. And if anyone has specific questions about each individual line, just drop it down in the comments below and I will answer any of your questions. So let's just start. First of all, this is the loop function, which is the function which is constantly looping. And I have this as a standard in all my data packs. So let's start with this section, which is the workbench section. So this is to make the workbench work correctly. So basically how it works is that it executes on all Anvil entities to try to detect any crafting tables below it. And if so, it will summon a, a marker armor stand for me, which will basically tell me where the crafting table was created so I can execute on that block in the future. And so it creates a dropper there and then any time that the armor stand which is marking the crafting table detects a certain pattern of items inside of the crafting table it's not really crafting table it's a dropper but anytime it detects a certain pattern then it will replace that dropper with a new dropper that has the correct items inside of it which is the result of the crafting recipe and so now if we go past there we go into the engine block and so for this block of code, this is basically just to detect if the tank engine is placed down by the player. And if so, it creates some sounds and stuff and it summons the spawner cage, which is the actual engine block that you can see. And it also is in charge of killing the engine block in case the player destroys the engine so that they actually get the item back. And then right here, is where I'm running the tank engine function file on any of the tank engine blocks. And that's basically this, which is just to detect if the player is actually building the tank around the tank engine correctly. So now we're moving on to tank setup. So this is basically looping on all tank riders and it's the command, I meant the function file that is looping is tank ride initialize. But the thing is that it will only, uh, run this command once because once this is run once this is run by the function in the loop it tags it's it tags the player so that it only runs once and that's basically how you're supposed to make a function run only once from a looping function file like the main and now this is basically executing on all players that are writing and it's constantly looping this tank ride command which i'll get into which is right over here. And now this is tank teleportation of parts. This section is basically in charge of teleporting all the parts of the tank to make sure that they're all being teleported in the correct location relative to the center of the tank. And so that's divided into subsections where we have the, the barrel and the hitbox and the actual turret of the tank that rotates around and the storage minecarts and stuff like that. And then now if we go into gravity, the way that this works is it's just detecting if all the blocks under the tank are air. If so, it drops it down. And then for up, it's basically detecting that the blocks that are at the same level at the tank are not all air, which means that the tank has run into a block. So then it teleports it up as long as nothing is blocking the tank. And for this, this is to reset the player writing. This basically detects if a player has just jumped off of the tank. 
if it has detected a player that just jumped off of the tank, then it basically clears their inventory of the control items, the arrows that you hold in order to move the tank. And then it also gives their item back by teleporting all of the items that are in the air that were taken from the inventory of the player. And it's basically teleporting that from the air down back to the player so they get their stuff back. And then this is executing a loop for the tank projectile on any tank projectiles. So any ammo that was shot is just going to loop this. And that's summoned in tank ride. And then the last stuff here is just to clear controls from players that try duping the items. But anyway, let's go to summon tank. So this is run any time that the tank engine is able to detect that the structure has been built. So basically what happens is that it summons all the parts of the tank. So the model part, that's what these are, custom model data. It summons the part that you could see and it summons an invisible hitbox which detects if the tank runs into something. And it detects some other uh, miscellaneous stuff that is just needed for it to work. So if you want to ask me about that, leave a comment. And it also sets the rotation of the tank depending on the direction that the engine was facing and the tank structure was facing when it was built. And this fixed graphic bug function is just to fix a bug with the game rendering uh, rotated armor stands. And then crush is basically just being, wrote, is being looped on all tank parts, which means that any time a tank part runs over one of these items, it's just going to destroy it. And then for tank ride initialize, this is basically just to start the player off. So what this is doing is taking all of the player's inventory items and putting it into a chest by using the data modify block item set from entity at S inventory. And then it's deleting all of the items that were not part of the hotbar. So this is basically how the inventory of the player is saved. And then this is just to set up the fuel of the tank. And this is to destroy the chest and then tag all the items that are flying in the air so that those play so that those items in the air will be able to be teleported back down to the player when it's need to be when it needs to be teleported back down. Now we get to tank ride. This is the command, the function file, which is being looped on all players that are currently riding inside of a tank. And so first of all, we have teleporting the parts. This is just uh, some extra stuff to make sure that the parts are being teleported correctly relative to the player. So when the player rotates around, it's basically making sure that the turret is facing in the same direction that the player is. And then this is basically just to detect if there's fuel inside of the inside of the fuel chest that it's going to take that fuel and turn it into actual usable fuel for the tank via scoreboards. And then here, this replace item stuff, this is basically to make sure that in their hotbar, they permanently have the items needed to be able to drive the tank. And then we have all of this stuff here, which is all the stuff I needed to be able to change the angle of the barrel because they all have to be manually posed right here in order to change the visual angle of the barrel. And then this is all the collision, which is basically adding tags onto the player based on which parts of the hitbox are hit. And then using a combination of which hitboxes are hit, I can determine whether or not the player is allowed to move forward. So for example, if the player is trying to move forward and left, if the forward left and forward hitboxes are both covered, then the player should not be able to move forward and left. However, since the back hitboxes are not covered, the player should be able to move back so that the player could back out and then go forward. And then finally here we have shoot. This is just detecting if the player drops the item so that and has ammo in the inventory so that the player can shoot properly. And then if it does shoot, it runs summon tank projectile, which is over here, which basically summons an armor stand, which is rotated to the right trajectory based on the angle of the barrel. And it's summoned at the right position based on the position of the barrel. It creates some sounds and some particles. And then if we go over to tank projectile, this is basically how the projectile is able to move through the air. And so the way it works is this is running 20 times a second. If I want the projectile to be able to move fast enough to match, to be like actually really fast so that it can hit a wall quickly, I need to teleport it, I believe 10 blocks at a time is how far I'm teleporting this. Yes, so you can see here, it's teleporting 10 blocks forward at a time, which means I also have to run tests for the block that was behind it so that when it's teleported 10 blocks forward, it won't teleport 
past something and it'll actually detect that within its path of being teleported it would have hit something. So it's basically detecting, is there something in front of me? No. Is there something in front of me? Two blocks in front of me? No. All the way until it gets to, is there a block 10 blocks in front of me? Then it'll say no, it'll teleport 10 blocks forward, and it'll keep running those tests. And, and it might say, oh, there's a block three blocks in front of me, so now I'm going to explode. So that's basically how it works. And that's everything for the tank data pack. And again, if you have any specific questions on how certain things work, make sure you leave a comment down in the description.